Welcome to my tutorial for Splatterhouse for the arcade. And I'm playing this on the Xbox 360. As you can see, it's one of the unlockable games in the trilogy. You can actually unlock the full trilogy, the old 16-bit games, on this uh, more current Splatterhouse game released in 2010, which was actually a pretty decent game, though I um, much prefer the originals. But um, that game did get shit on a lot. I thought it was pretty decent. I mean, nothing special, but kind of kind of uh, entertaining. So this is a game I beat many times, and I believe this is um, this concludes all the ports, and of course the original version of the game. I believe now I've beaten every version released on home consoles of the game and the arcade. Though maybe it was ported to another compilation I'm not aware of, but um, so I, I, you know, if I do find another version, I'll probably beat that as well in the future. So it took me around four hours and seven minutes to beat this time. I had not beaten the game in years, so I had to relearn it. And for this tutorial, it's just going to be a combination of some of my best gameplay from practice sessions and my actual legit run that I did, um, you know, this time. So it's really just going to be for um, for demonstration, just to show some of the, the best techniques I found. So for this part, there wasn't much to say about the first part, but for this part, just stand in the corner, duck, and just keep kicking. And as long as you have a few health points, you can sometimes just, you know beat this without taking a single hit. There's just kind of, if you don't want to stand up and punch him, and you just want to be real lazy about it and keep kicking, then it's more of a luck thing, and, and you may take one or two hits. So if you want to not take any damage, just simply stand and punch the uh, the higher worms that are getting close to you, and you can stand up and punch some of them. And then you can probably do it without taking any damage at all. But I just, I did it sloppily because it's such an easy boss, if you want to call it that, that, you know, there really wasn't any reason for me to refine it. This is also part of my, my just regular playthrough of just trying to beat this port of the game to get it on my kill list. Since I have a compilation games, uh, games beaten list for compilation games, I count that as basically a different system on my list. So this fell into the compilation category. I was just filling out that list. So, only some of the gameplay is more refined. That Most of that is from my practice session, which I, I started the game over on MAME and kind of cheated through with save states to practice uh, some troublesome parts. And I can show you some really good strategies that will make the hardest parts much easier. Especially one boss. The fifth boss is probably the hardest part of the game. And it's, it's a roadblock for a lot of players, I think, trying to beat this game. So I can simplify that. But yeah, just get the cleaver here and just take your time. There's no timer in this game, so just make sure you clear out all the enemies as they arrive. Take out the hanging guys. I believe those pools of vomit that come out of their stomach when you cut them open can hurt you if you stand on it, so just wait for it to disappear. Or you could test it to see if it hurts you. I assume that it did. I just avoid it. Grab this pole off the wall, and this part is also very easy. You can get into a rhythm here with taking these guys out. Initially, it's only a few, but then you will be surrounded by them on the left and right side of you, so just be aware of it. And to take care of that, you just hit, you know, swing right, swing left. You don't even really have to think about it. When you see them both appear, you just swing right and left, and you'll you'll take them both out pretty much. So um, if you don't if you don't get that, then you'll you'll get used to it. It's uh, it's very easy if you do that. You see me just swinging left and right to take out both. It's just a rhythm. This game really, it seems like a sluggish and slow kind of game. But it really um, it really has a rhythm in it. And it really does have tight gameplay. But it just, it feels awkward when you first play the game. I think that's normal for this game. It's just the way it plays. But once you get used to it, it feels great. So here you're going to see um, how to beat this house without damage. This is an easy boss. Just walk to the left a little bit and let that can fall at the very end. For the chair, you just punch and kick it. As it's coming towards you, as long as you're rapidly punching, you'll usually it'll usually go right into your fist and get hit most of the time. So do that a few times. Now get all the way to the back here and punch these knives. And some of them you're going to kick, I believe, if I remember right. But um, mostly just punch them. You see, they'll go right into your fist. Even if it's on your shoulder, it counts as your fist. So, um, And this is very easy. Just stay somewhat centered. You can go to the middle a little bit more than what I did and just punch it and bounce it off the walls, basically, and 
pivot left and right as needed to bounce it off the walls. Then just make sure you move away from the middle of the screen because the chandelier will fall on you. This game, pretty much most of the bosses, after you beat them, or at least a lot of them, will have something that comes out of them to try to get one last hit on you. And if you die from that hit, then of course you do have to start at the last checkpoint again. So, you know, just be aware of that when fighting the bosses. So for this part, if you want to save your shotgun, simply kick all the enemies. There is a way to stack shotguns for the boss and bring both shotguns to the boss. I don't do it here, but I will explain it from what I remember anyway. Take a piss in the bushes as needed. You know, sometimes you got to empty your bladder, especially when it's getting a little wet outside. It just makes me want to fucking piss in every bush I can. So kick these dogs. They will eat the dead bodies and shit, so that will distract them. So use that to kick them. Kick the baby. Go for a field goal. And, um... Yeah, try not to do that, really, but it doesn't really matter. If you do get sucked down there, you want to try to jump over those shadows in the bridge. I messed up there. If you do go down here, it is a really easy little mini stage that you have to go through to, to get you know to, to get to the further in the stage. So if you manage to beat this, which is very easy, just keep jump kicking, basically, and take these guys out. You can rapidly jump kick while in the air, so do that because... The reason I do a lot of rapid striking is because it's very reliable in this game. If you rapid strike and mash, you will usually, um, you know, if you're attacking in the right direction at the right time, you will usually land your shots. So it's good to mash. That's why you see me do a lot of mashing jump kicks, multiple jump kicks in the air, obviously. It's the only game I can think of where you can multiple jump kick in the air. I don't think that's really a normal thing in most games, but in, in these games it is. So if you do get sucked down there, you're going to lose your shotgun, but there will be another one at the end, but you're not going to be able to bring both shotguns to the boss. But you don't really need to do that. So if you want to keep your first shotgun, you know, don't get sucked down into those shadows in the bridge and, and keep the shotgun and just kick everything. If you kick, you won't fire your gun. And then what you want to do is um, just keep trying to pick up the shotgun while you already have your other shotgun, and it'll move the shotgun to the right of the screen. If you keep doing that, I believe you can move both shotguns to the boss. And you can just unload on the boss and kill it with like 16 shots or whatever it is. So that's an option if you're looking for an alternative way. The way I did it there was very simple. I, um, I shoot the boss with the shotgun each time it lands from getting hit or jumping. And I just get all the shots in that way. It's very easy to, to, to just shoot when it's, when it's not in the air, basically. You don't want to shoot it when it's in midair because you're going to miss. But, um, so after you've unloaded all your shotgun shots on the boss, what I like to do is, it's a little sloppy, but I'll usually come towards him with some jump kicks, and then I'll just rapidly punch. And I may take a hit, I'll usually take a hit, but then I'll just keep punching, and he'll get jammed up in my punches. And eventually that method will work. I may not get it on my first try, but it's a short stage, it's easy enough. If you keep using that method, you should break through eventually. So check what I did there, and if you really want an easier method, it's a little harder to set up. But bring both shotguns, like I said. And you can, I think, totally destroy the boss with just the shotgun. So keep that in mind. So now you'll see me using save states and things like that here because this was actually for my practice footage where I was doing everything section by section. And I wasn't trying to refine it for a video or anything like that. But I ended up using this footage because there's really not much to explain here. And I don't really need to do these sections perfectly to show you um, the, the basic idea of what to do. Though some parts are important, like I, I think the hardest boss should be done with no damage, and the hardest boss in the game is the fifth boss, strangely enough. Now this, these parts are very hard, these are some of the harder areas when you have to deal with three clones. There's another area where you have to deal with three clones too, but in that level you can take an alternative path, which is what I'm going to suggest and show. But in the meantime, you have to deal with these assholes, so this is going to be the hardest area of this stage. And um... You know, in the previous room, you jump over the blades, basically take out the bats. Pretty self-explanatory. Don't fall in the holes, obviously, because then you go to these alternative stages. You may want to see what those alternative stages are to see if you like doing those better. If those are easier for you, you can try them out if you want. But this was the route I took. And for this part, what I usually do is you can try sliding, which is kind of a hard move to do. Or you can just keep jump kicking. And the enemies, when they do break out of the mirrors, I think it's random mirrors that they come out of. When they break out, though, you can, if you're constantly jump kicking, you'll probably get a free first hit in on them when they break out. And then you can try to follow up with some more jump kicks and punches. There's, I don't have a solid strategy for the clones at all. 
I, that's why I avoid them in the second um, the second time they arrive in, in one of the other stages. I totally avoid them, if possible. But you can't avoid them here. This boss is actually very easy. See, I take no damage here. This was the first time I played it in, in, a, in a while. So um, just grab the cleaver, and you want to hit the heads to the left and right as they approach you. And you want to be positioned right where I'm here. You see where I'm standing. This is where you want to be, near the end of the screen, but not all the way at the end. You want to have it positioned just right so that when the boss arcs back to the right, the right edge of the screen, he gets hit by your axe. The goal here is to hit the middle head. That's what destroys the boss. So as you're striking the middle head, you want to do that with the cleaver. As you're doing that, um, you're damaging the boss. Eventually, when it takes enough hits, it'll die. The other heads that it has around it and the heads that come at you are all optional. You don't have to destroy them, but you you know, kind of do have to destroy them if you don't want to get hit because they will bust into you. So just destroy the ones that are in your immediate um, area that are about to hit you. But mainly, you just get in that corner and pivot left to right while swinging your axe. And you don't even have to, you don't have to walk left or right. You just stand there and pivot left and right. And, you know, swing at the heads as they approach you. And then turn to the right to swing at the boss multiple times. When it arcs back in that, in that right edge of the screen. That's all. Very easy if you do that. So this is the hardest stage of the game and the lengthiest. So I'm going to show all these sections here without any damage because this is a you know a good stage to have down. So this part's easy. Grab the the uh, pole and just strike the chair and just keep your distance a little bit and strike the chairs as you move forward. You may have to practice the rhythm, but it's easy. It shouldn't give you too much trouble. The key to this part is to constantly move and not stop. Otherwise, you'll slide down those little slopes. So what you want to do is keep walking forward and you want to jump when you get to the very edge of the platforms for the most part. It looks like you're going to jump into the hands, but you won't. So you want to walk all the way to the very edge and jump. Now for the first, um, you know, for the first intro to, the, to these pits, whenever you, whenever you start up the pit, you want to take out the first hand. There's two parts where you want to take out the first jumping hand and then move forward. Or wait for it to go down and then jump forward, either way. Take this upper ladder. This is the path that I'm going to recommend taking. So for this part, you just want to take out this uh, flying bitch immediately and jump right in the pit. That way you avoid this area. There's no reason to, to, to you know, this is the route that I that I, that I would rather uh, play because you can avoid the clones. I would say if you can avoid a room with three clones, you're better off avoiding it. So this is an easy little um, alternative area. Just jump kick these guys. You've dealt with a similar area already, but this one's even easier than the one in the um, third stage, I believe it was. So now this can be tricky. You save states to practice any troublesome areas on an emulator, and this is an area you'd want to practice, but it's not hard once you understand how it works. So you want to punch this summoner before he does his raising animation, which makes a sound. When he does that, he raises up all the dead bodies. So if you can't get to him close enough, you know, um, soon enough, stay back and take out the corpses first and then move forward. Now eventually, once all the corpses are down, if you can get the rhythm right, you can get him in an infinite loop where he's unable to raise the dead. If you can get to him quick enough on both sides. And you'll see me do that near the end. But you want to make sure that all the bodies are cleared out um, before you try to move towards him. So you see, I get this last one down, and I'm able to now get in and get the rhythm going. So once you hit them, move to the right immediately, then move back to the left, and just keep repeating that until he's dead. You, you may not get that loop, but a lot of times you can get it um, if you get the guys, you know, if you get enough of the bodies down, you can, you can eventually get in there and, and start that loop. But if not, you just want to keep hitting them left to right, obviously. It's, it's really not too hard as long as you... Don't try to rush ahead and get greedy and try to hit him early, you know, because he'll raise the corpses while you're jumping at him. And if he does that, then you will get hit. This part I found is pretty damn easy if you go all the way to the right edge of the screen. And, um, you know, just hit the worms that are, like, right up on your ass. They're about to jump into your head or some shit, you know. Jump and punch them. Kick some of them if you need to. But a number of them will just retreat to the left of the screen anyway, so... Stand out right edge, it's a pretty safe way to do that. I found it really easy to do that. Now this is the hardest part of the game, most likely, for most players. Uh, for me, it's one of the hardest parts. But it actually, I learned it pretty fast with save states. It didn't take me too long in practice to learn it. So I'm going to show how to do it with no damage. It has three phases. 
And each phase is dictated by when he transforms back into the girlfriend. So, first phase, let him jump over you and then turn around and punch him in the back midair. And, and of course, move so the claw doesn't hit you. After, every time you land a shot on him, you need to move. Because every time you punch him, he's going to try to claw you. So be aware of that. Very easy if you do that. But it does get harder. So second form, he's going to still do those, those large jumps that you're used to in the first phase. But now he's going to have a, a medium length jump. So be aware of that. And just be ready for it. It's really, it's that, see, it's that medium length jump. You got to be, you got to be ready to punch him in, in the face when he lands on that medium jump. If you're not ready for that, you'll get clawed. It can be tricky. You just got to, you got to have your distancing well, you know. Now for the third phase, this is the final phase, you really have to have your distancing down and, and have a good feel for uh, your punch range. Because if you don't get it right, you'll get hit. But um, he's going to mix in like these, these kind of medium jumps. And then sometimes he's going to do these tiny hops. See that? Those are the hardest to avoid. Now with the tiny hops, he also does, I believe, the large jumps too that you're already used to. But with those tiny little hops, those are the hardest to deal with. And the trick to that is just knowing your punch range and being very close to him and ready for him, you know, ready to react to whatever he does, whether it be the tiny jump or the, the medium or large jump. But the tiny jump, you just want to be ready just to punch him immediately when he lands from that small jump. But, like, if you don't have your distance right, your punch will miss and then you'll get clawed. So you do have to you do have to be real familiar with the distance. I recommend practicing parts like that with save and load state until you're comfortable with them. And then, you know, when you start to stage over legit, you can get there and you'll know what you're doing when you get there. And it's really not that bad. I mean, I found it to be pretty easy once I, once I figured it out. Now, for whatever reason, I beat this stage in about nine minutes when I was practicing on MAME, on, on the arcade emulator. Um, now, when I played it on the Xbox 360 compilation of the Splatterhouse 2010 game, which is what this... Um, well, actually, this, this is from the arcade because I lost the footage of the Xbox 360 game on the last two stages. So, like I said, this is a this is a match of different footages. But um, for whatever reason, when I played the Xbox 360 version, it took me a while to beat this stage. I mean, quite a while, probably over 30 minutes. I don't know why. And um, but when I did beat it, I actually beat the entire stage, including the boss, with with that with only getting hit one time. It was a nice run, but unfortunately, I lost the footage of it. So you're going to see me uh, taking a pretty good amount of damage here because this was the only footage I had left to use. I wasn't trying to refine it um, as this was just a loose practice session I was doing. But I always record even when I'm practicing. So it does come in handy for, uh, you know, rare instances when I do loose footage like that. And um, and for making tutorials and things like that. Um, for showing refined, you know, sometimes I'll get some good gameplay in the practice sessions that I can use. So here, if you get right at this range where I'm at on this heart. Once you get here, you can take out most of the bubbles by standing, uh, either punching or kicking as they appear high or low on the heart itself. Now, for the for the ones that appear behind you on the other side of the heart, just be ready to pivot in, in place and just kick them. Now, if you do get grabbed by those fucking babies, they shake out most of your life. You have to, you want to rotate the joystick or the D-pad in a circular motion for that to get them off really rapidly, really fast and aggressively. It's a pain in the ass. A lot of times you will die from that. Because you get one on you and then another one latches on you. So you want to take out the bubbles as aggressively as possible in that stage. And um, remember that the screen doesn't have to scroll on that stage. You can stop in place and the screen will stop scrolling. So it's not a pure auto-scroller. So you can fight the bubbles at your own pace if you need to by stopping the screen. I didn't really do that too much, but you can do that. And also you just want to try to take out the bubbles. As, they're, as the bubbles are forming, you can still hit them without taking damage. So you want to get in there quick and do that. So look at what I did there and, and utilize that. Now for this first part, it's just jumping the logs and then stopping and letting the fire guys jump over you. That's all it is, and you just have to memorize the rhythm of it and how it plays out. That's all that is. Now for this boss, this boss can be quite hard initially. What you want to do is, whenever the hands appear, you want to try to walk in the opposite direction so that the hands miss you. You want to try to minimize jumping if you can. Because when you jump too much, you are unable to jump again fast enough to dodge again. So you want to try to jump as little as possible. Don't, don't rely on it too much. Try to walk out of the way of the hands if you can. And all you got to do is either walk to the left or right depending on which side the hand appears on. If both of them appear, you got to get ready to time a jump and you have to have the timing right to dodge. Same with this. You see you can jump them and dodge them as well or move to the left or right. Sometimes you don't have room to move left or right so you just jump in place and you can do it. But sometimes they come out pretty... 
uh, quickly after one another. So they don't give you a lot of time, so that can be tough. The other thing is when punching this head, there's going to be debris falling down. So what's good to do is while punching the head is sometimes take a break from punching so that you have time to move you know, back away from the head and avoid the debris if possible. But the debris, it feels so random. It feels very hard to get a no damage on this boss, especially consistently. So, you know, since I wasn't trying to make a tutorial at this point, this was the footage I ended up having for my practice session. So I figured it was good enough because you're probably going to take some damage from some of the random bullshit, even once you've learned the boss. I mean, I learned it pretty well here, but I still got hit by bullshit. So, you know, expect that, you know, you can try to not get hit by the falling debris by um, just... Um, instead of mashing punch on the head, you can try to like hit the head a few times and back away and then go back and punch it some more. And that can sometimes give you enough of a breather to get away from that falling debris, but it doesn't always work out when I do that. So it's just something you can try to do if you want to be a little safer. Um, and the other thing is, you know, like I said, just, um, you want to avoid the hands, but you want to mostly avoid them by walking left or right to avoid them. You know, aside from the two hands that appear at the exact same time, you got to jump for that, but... The other ones, you just want to move, like, just try to walk left or right if you can, a short distance. And only jump when you need to, if possible, because if you jump too much, like I said, you're going to get caught where you're landing from a jump, but you just don't have enough time to jump again before the next hand appears. Because, you know, when, whenever you jump, you're floating in the air for, like, half a second or whatever it is. And that's plenty of time for more hands to come out and, and fuck up your rhythm. So, you know, keep in mind that walking is going to be the fastest way to dodge those hands. And, you know, if you need to jump, jump, but but try not to spam it. Because initially I was spamming jump to dodge him, and, you know, that didn't work out too well. But, yeah, aside from that, just practice the game with save and load states. The game gives you infinite continues. Um, but, you know, you do have to, if you do exhaust your lives, you do have to restart whatever stage you last got to. Um, but, you know, aside from that, it's very learnable. The game has a complete rhythm to it, as you can see. If you have any questions, let me know, and thanks for watching.